If Herzeg Novi is on your list of day trip options that you're trying to decide whether or not to visit, maybe from Dubrovnik or KOTOR, well, I'm going to take you along a day of what to see and what to know about traveling to Herzeg Novi. Spoiler alert, I loved it so much that I ended up staying a whole month. By the way, if you're brand new here, my name is Wando. I've been living a remote life working online from the Balkans and traveling around the region since 2017. So if you're interested in traveling and or living here too, be sure to subscribe. I arrived in Herzegnovi from Dubrovnik, which is only about an hour and a half away, including the border crossing. And I'm staying at this little cute Airbnb right in the old town also right next to a fortress. This well-equipped, cute little suite that even has a backyard was only 23 euros a night in April and early May. It was also only an eight minute walk from the bus station. And even better, my Airbnb host offered to show me and you the best things to see around the town. So with that being said, let's go take in the best things to see in Herzeg Novi. Right now we're standing in front of the church of St. Archangel Michael. This church used to be a mosque during the Ottoman Empire rule, but from 1911 it has been an Orthodox church. So the church of course used to look more like a mosque, but builders from Dalmatia came and they made it more of a Baroque style. Also, the square that we're standing in is called Bella Vista, and that's because Montenegro, just like Dalmatia, has um, history of Venetian rule. So that's why you'll see here in Montenegro, there's some Italian words in the language. So Herzeg Novi was founded by Trvetko the first a Bosnian king in the 14th century and something that's cool about Herzeg Novi as you can see there's a lot of walls that surrounding that are surrounding this town it's a very fortified town and that's because it's endured so many invasions so ever since um, Tvrtko was the king they've always been constantly fortifying the town against the Turks the Hungarians the, the Italians the Venetians so that's a really cool thing about Herzeg Novi, which is why it's so beautiful. I love these ancient fortified towns like this. So like even this wall right here is from the 14th century. That's insane. Novi's old town has a lot of winding up and down staircase-like streets, which I love. Compared to KOTOR's old town that's very flat, or Dubrovnik's old town that's very grand, Herzeg Novi's has a more rustic back streets of a medieval city vibe, which is just so cool. We then walked along Njegosheva Street, a beautiful pedestrian road with a market, some clothing stores, that turns into a road for cars full of shops and restaurants and a beautiful park below. We eventually stopped in the restaurant Gradska Kafana where we ordered local rakia made of grapes, which is something I'm actually not used to after living so many years in Serbia where most rakia is made from plum. Cheers. Jivali. Jivali. <laughs> Jivali. 
All right, so I just woke up from taking a nap and now I'm going to hit up the two fortresses because if you've been watching this channel, you know it's fortress time. <laughs> so there's a fortress that sits atop the old town and there's a fortress that's back there that looks over the sea. It's like right on the sea. How amazing is that? Is that? So first we're going to the fortress that's on top of the old town. So unfortunately, the fortress is closed. That sucks, because this one has an amphitheater. If I can't catch one of these fortresses while it's open, then the drone will have to catch it for me. This is Kanli Kula Fortress. It was built in the 16th century and its name means bloody tower in Turkish. That's because when the Ottoman Empire was ruling over Herzegnovi, the fortress was not only a defensive fortress, but it was also a prison where freedom fighters of Montenegro and opponents of Turkish occupation were tortured and killed. In the 1960s though, it was reconstructed to be used as an open air museum and then a summer amphitheater. Okay, so now we're going to the other fortress. Oh God. Oh God, so this one's closed too. Um, this one, it says it's open till 5 p.m. and it's not. The other one, it said it's open till 8 p.m. and it's not. I'm sure in the regular tourism season, um, maybe those Google hours will be more normal. But this is why. We bring a drone. Forte Mare, which means sea fortress in Italian, overlooks the Bay of Kotor. It was commissioned to be built in the 14th century by King Tvrtko I to protect against attacks from the sea. It gets its Italian name as a result of Herzegnovi's time under Venetian rule in the 17th century. And up to the 18th century, throughout centuries of Turkish and Venetian rule, Forte Mare underwent multiple renovations and defensive fortifications. And believe it or not, it was a discotheque for famous stars in the late 20th century. So once you reach this fortress, <laughs> it's also the way to the beach. So you just come down these stairs that are in front of the fortress and it takes you to, I think it's called Herzegnovi Beach. Um, it takes you to the promenade as well. Um, that's free. <laughs> so let's go check that out. So right now I'm at Herzegnovi Beach. So you just come down the stairs that are just in front of the fortress, Forte Mare, and it takes you to Herzegnovi Beach. And then it has this really beautiful uh, pedestrian zone um, promenade that goes all along the bay. And it's great for running, biking, going for a walk. So I'm gonna go for a little short walk there because you can also see views of like, the ginormous mountain peaks in the back, but it's so beautiful here. Can't wait to go for a run here. This promenade is what really sold me on staying in Herzegnovi longer. I just fell in love with all its cute cafes and restaurants by the water. The beautiful port. And such a long path for running, walking, biking, with an incredible view of the mountains. I fell in love and stayed for a month. And so to answer the question, should you travel to Herzegnovi? Absolutely. 
It's way cheaper than Dubrovnik and KOTOR, so it's a great place to stop in, to save on your wallet after you spent so much money in those places. It's such a beautiful seaside town perched below a mountain for a range of excursions. So unless you're looking for partying in Budva or island hopping in the Elefiti Islands near Dubrovnik, which I have a video about linked in the description and in the cards, or a cultural shakeup in the Albanian populated Ultsin town of Montenegro, Herzegnovi is just so underrated. You have to come. And if you appreciate this video helping you plan your trip, please give it a like. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.